Hello! I have been a geophysicist for 45 years, but for the past 20 years I've researched scientific visualization. Primarily, but not always, with seismic data. We're not the only ones whose visualization skills need an upgrade. I have recently created a Discord server called the Virtual Seismic Reality Community. It's brand new and it's where I will share my research. There's a link to it at the end of this video. In the next few minutes, I'll explain why I want you to follow the link and join the community. And I'll do that by drawing a comparison between what is happening today in the fields of virtual and augmented reality and what was happening in the mid 1980s with the field of digital seismic processing. Let me show you something. You are looking at a stratoscape display of a 2D seismic line, built, animated and visualized in real time using the same virtual reality techniques familiar from gaming. It is a massively interpolated 3D surface with seismic amplitudes forming the terrain. This is seismic in its natural analog state and if seismic were invented today in this world of multi teraflop graphic cards and virtual and augmented reality, this is unquestionably how you would look at it. Using stratoscape displays, I intend to prove to you personally and the exploration industry at large that the seismic we acquire and produce today is much better than we think. If you permit me a few minutes, I'll briefly explain not only why it's better, but why you already know it's better. For me, the phrase, the seismic you have is better than you think, goes back to the mid 1980s when I was managing a seismic processing center in Calgary. One day, the company president, Leo Dunn, introduced me to his friend who had a problem. To meet contractual obligations, his friend had drilled a well, expecting nothing. Instead, he hid a porous hydrocarbon charged sand body that, as he explained, he couldn't see on his seismic. We reprocessed his seismic and the target being shallow, we recovered up to 100 Hertz signal. There, right where we drilled, was a beautifully imaged channel. We were pleased. But when we showed it to Leo's friend, he covered his eyes and said in exasperation, I can't look at that. There are too many wiggles. Yeah. He had us filter it to 1545 to match the seismic he was used to. When we did, his channel all but disappeared. I told you so, he said. You just can't see it on seismic. As absurd as that sounds today, in the mid 80s it was quite common. Digital seismic was only 20 years old and many of the interpreters, like Leo's friend, had entered the industry long before the revolution began. They didn't understand time series analysis or the damaging effects that filters can have. But ultimately, Leo's friend did. As I explained to him, the seismic you have is better than you think. And we spent the rest of the day with me giving him a crash course in Fourier analysis and filters. In the end, he listened, learned, and he got the point. Then he became an early advocate for interpreting the least filtered section possible. Let's move forward to today. Today we were amid another revolution and like digital signal processing in the 80s, this one is about 20 years old. What I am talking about is the revolution that has taken place over the past two decades in the fields of virtual and augmented reality. Almost all of you watching this video will be familiar with both subjects from either gaming or the entertainment industry. But do you recognize their scientific potential? As I showed you earlier, this is a stratoscape display. And if seismic were invented today, this is unquestionably how you would look at it. But seismic was not invented today. Digital seismic is now more than 50 years old. But let's be honest, we still visualize it using techniques that were developed 
at the very beginning of the digital era. To understand the consequences of this lack of progress, think of the display itself as a filter. I'll talk a lot more about this in the future, but for now, think of this as seismic in its natural analog state. When you display it as a 1970s era variable density display, you filter away everything but the most obvious amplitude variations. When you display it as a 1960s era grayscale display, you filter away everything but the most obvious fine scale details. And finally, when you display it as a 1920s era wiggle trace display, you filter away everything but one dimensional character and waveform. In pointing this out, I'm not saying anything you don't already know. But like Leo's friend, who initially did not understand how much information he was losing because of his frequency filters, do you understand how much information you are losing because of your display filters? Because he filtered everything 1545, as a matter of course, Leo's friend had no idea what lay outside the limits of his frequency filter. It was up to us to show him and prove the relevance. Because you use conventional seismic displays, as a matter of course, let's face it, what other choice have you had? Can you honestly say that thinking of them now as filters, you know what lies outside their limits? I don't think I'm stretching things to say that most geoscientists today would get the point when I said to Leo's friend that his seismic was better than he thought. Do you now get a sense of why I'm saying exactly the same thing to you now? Virtual and augmented reality are perceived as entertainment tools, but are you now getting a sense of their scientific potential? Conventional seismic displays are based on technology that was made obsolete by virtual reality 20 years ago. Every time you use one today, like Leo's friend, you are inadvertently filtering out massive amounts of critically important information. But virtual and augmented reality can bring it all back. Leo's friend eventually became an advocate for using the least filtered section possible. He preferred, once he understood the theory, to pick through noise rather than risk filtering out signal. What about you? Are you prepared to continue using heavily filtered seismic? Or are you prepared to become an advocate for using the least visually filtered seismic possible? Because that is what stratoscape displays are, and it's what virtual seismic reality is all about. It's about producing the least visually filtered seismic possible. What I am asking for from you is the same thing I asked of Leo's friend all those years ago. I'm asking you for the opportunity to prove it. I'm asking you for the opportunity to prove that the seismic you are working on today contains massive amounts of information that has been filtered out, not this time by a frequency filter, but by a display filter. So please follow the link to our Discord server and become a member of the community. It's brand new. We're just getting started, but I'm adding things every day. Let's get together and discover what Seismic is truly capable of. Because Seismic, when you finally see it, is truly amazing.